How's it going guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle and today we're going to be taking a look at Fish Flies Issue 2. This is written and drawn by Jeff Lemire and this issue is a pretty good issue establishing this sort of weird feel of the story, you know. Uh, issue 1, we had to set a few things up, but here's kind of more living in the world and getting to know it. Uh, no spoilers for this issue, but I will talk openly about issue 1, so spoilers for issue 1. But anyway, in the last issue, you had the criminal during a robbery gone wrong, he accidentally shot a kid, now he's in, now the kid's in the hospital, and the criminal got some sort of, you know, I think like the bug juice went into him and made him turn into a giant flish, fish fly. Really interesting stuff. This little girl, uh, Francis, finds him, and you get one of those little girl and big monster stories. And I really do like her talking and her views on the world and she actually gets some really deep character moments towards the end of this book and I really do like to see how she sees the world but also the the big monster trapped by what he's done and also the transformation kind of being a metaphorical version of the trap it's a really interesting character and I'm really curious to see how this goes I believe this is six issues six issues with a thicker page count that's pretty cool so we haven't really heated up yet we don't really know what the meat and bones of the story is is it going to be crime is it going to be magical i don't know if it's going to be a, a police chase or what but getting in slowly getting the feel for this world and just seeing that fun combo of characters that really will define the series so far really interesting can't wait to see where it's going. Really do like this book. It kind of feels like like Fargo, that sort of tone where it's just kind of real and down to earth, but instead of big crime elements, well granted there are big crime elements in here, but with a supernatural twist. It's like Fargo, but with a supernatural twist. And I think that that's really interesting. And also, again, with that thicker page count, and with Lemire himself doing the art, he can take all the moments he needs to do bigger art pages and let the emotion really sink in. There's some good large panels and splashes in here, and I really do like how it's told and with the colors being all muted and stuff. It's pretty cool. I guess in order to talk about this further, let's go ahead and switch to the close-up camera. I'll show you guys a little bit of the story and the art. I won't do any major spoilers, but let's uh, show you guys the physical release and do a bit more of analysis. So without further ado, to the close-up camera. All right, here we are inside the castle taking a closer look at Fish Flies number two. I really do like the, the simple cover, the simple but effective and gets the point across. And I love the big block with the image logo and the ribbon. Really cool stuff. And if we take it closer to the camera, take a closer look at the art there. And also, this is thick enough that they could write the title on the side and even put a little number two there. Uh, the back is going to be that wanted poster again. $5.99 US, which is a totally fair price considering it is very thick. 00211 rated M for mature, which, yeah, okay, there is some violence and some language in this. It really isn't that gritty of a book, though, but hey, maybe later on, I don't know. Uh, crack it open, and we do get Jeff Lemire up there at the top against this wing. I do wish that they would put it previously on because again it's been like a month since I read the last one and it took me a minute to remember what was going on. I will always advocate for previously ons even if they're just a couple sentences. I really wish it had it here but I did remember pretty quick uh, but it just you know it takes a second. Anyway uh, we open up with the mom of the boy in the hospital and we see the mini mart has the caution tape 
but also all these flies and you have to walk and you go crunch 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 it's such a it, like natural but ugh, gooey thing but anyway the mom picks up a fly and looks at it and puts it in her pocket and leaves and later on in the book I'm gonna put this together chronologically for the sake of reviews uh, we'll meet this detective character and the mom will come in and she'll start to say what she thinks is going on how she saw her kid in the hospital and had a vision of him covered in flies and how it has something to do with the moon but she can't quite figure out what and you know you come in with these predictions of doom but at the same time yeah I don't really know these are my clues but how do I put them together and of course the detectives going to humor her it's a small town he's trying to be nice but will he really believe that and then we do get the girl and the monster there and we get her talking and saying things like well this happened because you did bad stuff I guess you gotta do good stuff now right and I do like her logic and how she looks at the world and how in a lot of ways it's innocent but also in some ways it's flawed like I won't spoil it and I won't go too far into the book but she does talk about her mother towards the end and it is a bit of a gut punch this one thing she says and it's like I could see how a kid would think that but gee it's it's dark uh, but she's like oh you can't talk now I really wish I had someone to talk to can you even understand me anymore and of course she says hey I have to go to school you you, you have to stay in the barn we can't let anyone see you and he, she even goes that's it good boy so how how does she see this guy does she see does she see him still as a person that almost sounded like the way you would talk to a dog you know what's their relationship really like as far as balance of power you know we do get more sequences we'll get part where they come back we'll get a part in school where she has to deal with these bullies and I really do like this takes place in Canada and they're singing the Canadian anthem at the beginning of class you know I never really thought of that but I guess yeah, you know, we always sang the American, uh, the pledge and the national anthem and all that, you know, so I'm like, man, I don't even really know the tune to this. You really realize your limited perspective. And we also get a fun dream sequence with the bug, and I won't show too much from this, but I will say how everything else has these muted colors when you get a change, you really notice that change, and these are some really haunting dark greens and we see the kitty shot with this trail of blood floating through the air as if it was water that's pretty cool so I do like a lot of this book but this is a slower issue more focused on emotional beats and letting us establish how the town breathes I don't know if this book will get to be more action heavy later on. I don't know if it'll get to be more strange and surreal later on. Or maybe the whole book will be kind of meandering and slow paced, but in this quirky and wacky world. You know, I I don't know, but so far I'm really liking it. I, I think it's pretty fun. And I believe there's six of these, so four more to go. Uh, I guess this is the ending of Act 1. Anyway pretty cool stuff. Uh, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my Jeff Lemire playlist where you can see my review for issue one of this, but also a bunch of his other stuff like Little Monsters, some of the Bone Orchard mythos. I've covered a bit of his work. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Jeff Lemire playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.